Good evening to all of you, and thank you for being present here in such large numbers on this occasion. It is an occasion we have uh, awaited, I must say, with both anticipation and some dread because of the circumstances under which this book is being released. This cannot, as Ajay has just told us, be a celebration in the true sense of the term. It is more in the, nation, uh, in the nature of a commemoration of a year-long struggle which shows no signs of abating. We are a few days away from a very important anniversary of the day on which our troubles began last year. I'm not referring to February the 9th. I'm referring to January the 27th when Professor Sapori stepped down as our Vice Chancellor last year. Things have gone from bad to worse to catastrophic. And so it is not with any sense of uh, wanting to crow about some achievement that we have gathered here today, but rather to collectively commemorate not just the uh, things with which we have been confronted, but for the very valiant struggles that have been put up, not only by the students who continue to put up such a struggle as we can see from the tents around this celebration, but also from the, to, to celebrate the solidarity of teachers. I'm one of those who also believes that from every disaster there springs an opportunity. And this opportunity came last year when our new Vice Chancellor said, when all the problems broke out after February the 9th, that teachers should go back to normal, students should go back to normal, and that things should continue in this university as normal. And that was why at the GBM that uh, Ajay just told us about, we said that the, perhaps the most normal thing that we can do is to teach. And wh what better than to do a teach-in out in the open, outside of our class hours, in the true JNU spirit, because we all know that teaching does not happen in JNU only within the classrooms. So the teaching was conceived as a teaching which addresses the issue with which we were all confronted, which was the issue of what is anti-national. So we started with this negative term, this pejorative term, in order to arrive at an understanding of what is nationalism itself. So in some ways, that opportunity was given to us precisely by the Vice Chancellor's desire that JNU takes its place in the forefront of those universities which will engage with MOOCs, Massive Open Online Courses. I cannot think of a more massive, more open, online course than the one we offered on nationalism in the month of February and March. We intended that lecture series to run only for a week. It was extended on popular demand to two weeks and further extended on popular demand to an entire month. And as you know, it was followed by another couple of weeks of lectures on Azadi. So, I think we have pioneered something here, fulfilling uh, uh, perhaps what the UGC would not have thought of even in its wildest dreams. Because this lecture series has been watched not only in India, but worldwide, as you all know, because it was simultaneously live streamed, and it continues to be watched and discussed. I have traveled to various fairly a small parts of India in the last year. And I have come to know that there have been discussions about this lecture series in very, very different locations. 
So it has proved to be a very important moment, a pe an important pedagogical moment, which was, I would say, unanticipated. It was unanticipated by us as the organizers of the series. It was unanticipated, I think, by the TA, but it is one of the best unanticipated outcomes. You might rightly ask, and there are already some posters that I'm looking at here, why a book if the lecture series has been so popular online. And I would like to say that there are very important reasons for a book. We ourselves thought that the book might be unnecessary, and in fact it might not work, because most of these lectures were delivered orally, and they had their, their uh, momentum, they had their verve, none of which can be captured in print. But let me tell my young friends here who think that the TA is commodifying the event and that HarperCollins is coming into it to make money, that this was on popular demand. Not only was there a demand for a print version of these lectures, but there was a demand nationwide for translations into various languages. Some of those translations are already underway. But there is another important reason, I think, why we need the book. The book is not just the lectures. It is more or less an archive. And I can say this proudly as a historian, that it is an important archive. Not just of that moment, but look at the front cover. This is what our steps were when we held the Nationalism Lecture Series and the Azadi Series last year. Today, our administration has indulged in a series of acts which we can call building, on the one hand, an architecture of fear in terms of barring that space, and also engaging in a certain kind of horticultural excess in order to prevent students and others from sitting on the steps. This horticultural excess is nothing but a sign of nervousness about the enormous publicity and attention for the extremely creative use of these steps that was made during the lecture series last year. But let me say there is yet another reason why we need this archive of a book. We need this archive of a book because we were victims last year, as you all know, of digital manipulation of the most difficult kind, the kind that we could not in some ways contest. That digital manipulation is something I hope will not be possible with a printed book. The book has given us an opportunity and all the 24 speakers of the series an opportunity to not only revise what they had said, but to add to this excellent presentation by uh, providing footnotes in some cases, providing more references in other cases, and in some cases, leaving it simply the way it was delivered. The book has, in keeping with its intention of being an archive, retained the diarized form, that is to say it has retained the order in which the lectures were given. They have not been reorganized thematically, they have not been reorganized alphabetically, they have remained in this book as testimony to the order in which these lectures were delivered. It is also, as you know, interspersed with some excellent photographs. And here I have to confess, my colleagues and I were spoiled for choice. We had a lot of photographs to choose from. Needless to say, the maximum number of photographs were of the iconic steps. But we have chosen some, and we hope that this will be a, a, a record, as it were, of that extremely important moment. The book release itself is something that I should spend one minute speaking about because we put a lot of pressure on our publisher, HarperCollins, to bring it out 
in time for Independence Day, August 15th last year. That was not possible. We shifted the date to a more feasible October 2nd. That was not possible. Now, finally, on the eve of Republic Day, we are finally able to release this book before Republic Day is redesignated as some other kind of day. And on that note, I want to say that we are living through this moment, so I cannot think of a more appropriate moment when we are discussing the question of hypernationalism and the roots of hypernationalism, because we now realize that it is not only in India that we are faced with this kind of hypernationalism. January 20th has been declared by President Donald Trump as National Patriotic Day. So we will see this kind of hypernationalism extending itself across many countries in the years to come. And it is important for us as a university which encourages critical thinking to be engaged in the act of rethinking the question of nationalism. I'm not going to repeat what is already in these uh, covers. Uh, I would uh, like you to go through it. There is a brief introduction. But I will simply say this to repeat what Ajay has said. JNU has had a large number of courses on nationalism that have been offered by many centers, including and especially the History Center. But this nationalism series was something unique and special, not just because the audience was a mixed audience, but also because the people who delivered these lectures were from across the entire spectrum of not only political views, but also representing a variety of disciplines. In spite of that, I would like to take this opportunity to confess some of our failings. We did not succeed in bringing in as many of our colleagues from science, from the media and cultural studies departments, from the languages, and we did not succeed in having enough, I would say, of a representation of those who promote the more, the darker kind of nationalism to which we are witness today. But we have made every effort. We, we, uh, I would also like to mention one more thing, and this is something that came to me only when I held the printed book in my hand. You will notice that many of the photographs foreground Rohit Vemala's suicide and foreground the memory of that very dark moment in our institutional history. However, I do believe that that was not at the foreground of many of the lectures that were delivered during the nationalism series. Neither in the foreground was the issue that kicked off the series, the question of Kashmir. It was not foregrounded. Of course, it was mentioned by several speakers, but not in the same way that the questions of nationalism were discussed. Um, I'm only pointing these out as some sort of lapses no book can hope to achieve everything, but we do feel a very important effort has been made here, especially at a time, and I would like to sort of conclude my remarks with this observation, especially at a time when the social sciences are facing the greatest onslaught, not just in this country, but worldwide. But now the onslaught is in JNU as well. Every effort is as you know, being made by our administration to, to foreground and to give prominence to the sciences and to increase the profile of the sciences as if the social sciences and the humanities do not have a very crucial role to play in the building of a critical intellectual culture. So we are faced with this precarity of the social sciences of the humanities right here within this university itself. And that's the note on, of, the note of, of caution uh, on which I would like to conclude these few remarks. I want to say one last thing, and that is no work like this is ever possible and in such a short time had it not been for excellent
excellent team effort. I would like to invite the two members of the editorial collective who are here with us today, Malarika Sinha Roy and Mohinder Singh, to join me on the stage here because they were equally part of not only organizing the nationalism lectures, but uh, part of the slog that went into making this book possible in such a short time. Rohit Azad, who is the fourth member of this team, is currently on a Fulbright Fellowship in the United States, but he was very much part of it as long as he was physically here as well as online. So I would like to take this opportunity to thank my colleagues Mohinder Singh and Manarika Senharoy. Give them a nice clap, my friends and colleagues. And thank you very much for your patience.